Welcome to the Madame National Cycling Center, where three months later it will take the name of the Cisco Milton Pan Am Para Pan Am Velodrome after the Hanover on May 15th for the Pan Am Para Pan Am Games held in Toronto this summer. The $56 million velodrome is one of its kind, not only in Milton, but also in Canada. It was funded by the town of Milton, the provincial and federal government, along with a $14 million donation from the private sector, $2 million of which is contributed by the Madame National Cycling Centre. Uh, the only venue of its kind in Canada, there's only one other in all of North America, and that's in Los Angeles. It's a 250 meter uh, category one certified velodrome uh, cycling track. What makes it unique is that it's obviously indoor, it has a Siberian spruce wood track. Uh, the reason being it's from Siberia is it's a very short run inside the winter, so it makes for a very hard work, which is uh, is required for all these bikes to be riding on. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, in, in terms of uh, the uniqueness of it, it's, it's hosting the Canadian Games this summer. And the uh, Canadian National Olympic team has now made this their home. They're training here permanently. Uh, prior to that, they were having to travel to Los Angeles and do training camps there. So in terms of uh, the sport, it's really going to move the sport of cycling to the next level in Canada. We're, we're complete. We have full occupancy. Um, we've already hosted a number of large cycling events. We hosted an international event back in January. I mean, there's some final finishing touches being put on the building, I'll say, but in terms of uh, being open in all spaces and all functional areas, absolutely we're open. open to the public. You know, you can see people right now walking and jogging on the running track, fitness center uh, is full right now, and, you know, the cycling track, the cyclists ready to go, where we're, you know, all the major areas of public uh, able to use and visit our circuit. As you can see here, a cyclist is circling around the track right now, doing what they call an aerodynamic testing. This is a test that would determine what kind of fabric of the athlete's clothing will have the least friction against the wind when they compete. On May 15th, the town of Melbourne, which is us, will we'll turn over the facility to Toronto 2015, the organizing committee, which they'll come in and do what they call overlay. So they'll they'll make the look and feel of the place, uh, you know, with all their Pan Am Toronto 2015 imaging and colors and all sorts of things. They'll they'll erect tents and you know all those sorts of uh, structures they need to deliver the games. And then they're going to be 2,500 people in here. They're going to be bringing in temporary seats. To right now, there's 1,500 seats. They'll be bringing an additional thousand. So those sorts of things, that's that's what they'll be doing as the, as the games draw near. Just during the games, the Toronto 2015 is responsible for that. Uh, their ISU unit, which you know, is, is made up of all the, the different policing jurisdiction, jurisdictions, you know, RCMP, OPP, the whole regional police in this area being I mean, that's, that's the way it is with a lot of venues. They don't allow on-site parking for security reasons, um, so they'll be shut, and want to be uh, parking in different locations, shuttled in, go through the security checkpoints. Uh, you know, you don't you know, often get to park close to a building or a facility in the major type of sport games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a fully accessible facility. We're hosting the Parapan Games, mm -hmm. um, and therefore need to meet some stringent requirements of the of that organization. And, and certainly, um, everywhere everywhere in the building is fully accessible. There's ramps, fully accessible ramps. It's, it's built in excess of Ontario building standards for accessibility, and certainly we're operating programs and want to continue to operate programs that uh, cater to, to that to that population. During the games, the the everyone will be shuttled in, and the spectators will be shuttled in from a, another recreation center that's located in town. I mean, it is it is right now essentially in the middle of a field, um, but long term. Uh, there's a plan to be much, uh, this will be uh, surrounded by a lot of uh, other things that are, the town is currently engaged in trying to attract a university. Um, that will go immediately to the south of here, uh, we'll the Laurier University, hopefully. Um, it's not approved yet, but we're hoping it will be. And so essentially, this will become the rec center for that campus. The uh, address is 2015 Pan Am Boulevard, and um, you know, obviously on purpose. And, and you know, many years from now, it's meant to certainly signify and uh, commemorate 
you know, the games that were hosted at this facility and in a large part why this facility was built. So, you know, many years from now when people, you know, come and find out the address, it'll make them think, oh, okay, this, this was a legacy facility from those games and certainly it lives on for many years, many, many, many years and, you know, lots of uh, the community and kids and hopefully future, you know, Pan Am Games and Pan Am Games and Olympic champions will, will come from this facility as a result. The Cisco Milton Pan Am Para Pan Am Velodrome will host the events of track cycling and individual time trial cycling competitions of the Toronto 2015 Pan Am Para Pan Am Games. Apart from the 250 meter track, there will be additional facilities such as basketball courts, volleyball courts, a fitness center, a jogging track, as well as restaurants and bike repair shops. It will also be the office of the Ontario Cycling Association. Kelsey Chang, Toronto Observer TV News.